Good evening and welcome to the select board meeting of Monday, August 12th, 2019 at 7.15 p.m. Uh, first, we're going to continue on with introductions. I am the chair of the select board, Diana M. Mahan, and to my right, your left. John Hurd. Joe Curo. Dan Dunn. Steve DeCourcy. Adam Chapdelaine, town manager. Doug Heim, town council. Maria board administrator. Thank you. Uh, our first agenda item the approval of a bond, MWRA, and we have our treasurer and collector of t taxes, Ms. Phyllis Marshall. Ms. Marshall, if you could just say your name again and position. I'm Phyllis Marshall. I'm the treasurer collector for the town. I wanted to um, speak to you this evening about uh, $1.3 million wa um, water main interest-free loan that was approved by town meeting in April of 2018. And um, it's the, the project that was approved by the MWRA was for um, improvements to the water system for Bloom, Blossom Street, Brattle Street, Newland Street, I think it's Newland Drive, and Oak Ledge Street. Um, that work will be done in the fall of 2019 through the fall of 2020. Thank you. Is there a motion? Move approval by Mr. Kerr. Uh, actually, does this vote need a uh, particular form? The form no. is here. Okay. Second. Moved by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Any comments or questions? If not, oh, Mr. Carroll, I'm sorry. I would just say this is an interest free loan, correct? Yeah. Yes, so that's we'll correct. I always like that. Right. So, it's a 10 year loan. Yep. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, on a motion by Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Hurd, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, unanimous vote. We thank you. Nice thank to you see very you. much. Thank you. thank you. You're welcome to stay, but I know you have a lot of work to thank do. You. So. Thank you very much. Okay. Consent agenda, minutes of meeting, July 22nd, 2019. We have reappointments to the Public Memorial Committee. Eugene O'Neill, Dennis Corbett. Alexander Salaponte and William Copperthorne request Oktoberfest at the Old Schwamm Mill. October 5th, 2019, noon to 4 p.m. We have a request one day beer and wine license September 7th, 2019 at Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event. We have another request one day beer and wine license September 28th, 2019 at Robbins Memorial Town Hall for a private event. First, is there a motion to approve? So moved. By Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. Um, First, is there anyone here to speak to any of these? Uh, yes, uh, my name is Ed Gordon. I'm the director of museum programs for the old Schwamm Mill. And I want to thank you for issuing us a beer and wine one day license permit for the mill's third annual Oktoberfest event to be held on Saturday, October 5th of this year. And I hope you will all join us for what is a really great event. Uh, this year we have a new feature, a pop-up arts and crafts silent auction of work donated by past artists and craftspeople who have exhibited at the mill. And then we'll have two bands and uh, aeronaut beer under the tent and kids activities. So it's a really, really fun and exciting day. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dunn? Uh, if someone wants to learn more about it, where can they go online? So uh, you can go at uh, www.info at oldschwammill.org to um, find out about it. We issue a monthly e-newsletter. It'll be in our hard copy newsletter that's coming out in early September, and it'll be advertised on the Arlington list, etc. Thank you. Thank you. Um, anyone else here for items under consent agenda? Any further questions or comments by my colleagues? Uh, if not, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. I'm a court reporter. I've been talking in the mask all day. Uh, agenda item seven, uh, under appointments, we have the Poet Laureate of Arlington, Mr. Stephen Rattener. Um, Mr. Kiro, would you like to introduce who's coming up? Or? No, no. Okay. Did you want to? Yeah, I think I'll. I'd like to suggest, uh, Madam Chair, that we um, uh, recognize um, Liza Halley, who's the chair of the Poet Laureate Committee, which has um, uh, conducted the search for our third Poet Laureate um, and is putting forward Mr. Ratner's name uh, for uh, approval. 
Thank you. Hi, I just want to thank you all for your support of the Poet Laureate program, and this is our third person that we've selected and suggest that you approve for appointment of the Poet Laureate position. Steve Ratner brings many, many, many years of experience and beautiful poetry, and he has wonderful plans for what he would like to do to share the magic of the written word with the town of Arlington. So I hope that you will approve him tonight and um, enjoy the words that he's come to share with you. Do we have Steve come up and say something? So Hello. everyone watching will now know who Steve is. <laughs> um, uh, first of all, I uh, want to thank you all for um, this honor. Uh, my wife and I have been Arlington residents for about 35 years, so it's a doubly sweet thing when you feel some recognition from the place you call home. Um, I'll say this, that I'm also aware that this is the honor that you're doing, uh, you're using the honor symbolically for me to honor the fact that Arlington's become a, a wonderful place for not just poetry, but all the arts. And this is a way, I think, for the select, uh, uh, select men and women to be saying, um, we know this is an important thing for shaping our community, for uh, sharing our voices. And so I think uh, the idea of being a poet laureate is a way of both uh, sharing the poetry and perhaps even finding uh, surprising ways of doing that. Um, many of you perhaps uh, have only run into poetry in schools, and if so, if you were lucky enough to have a good teacher, that's great. Many did not. So some people get very nervous around poetry. They remember being graded in poetry. So for me, the idea of sharing poetry in the town is about uh, discovering pleasure. The pleasure and the insight of having your own language, your own words, carry some piece of your life. Um, my goals uh, uh, are sort of threefold, and I won't go into them uh, here, but one is about education. Uh, I've worked for the last 40 years as a poet in residence through the Massachusetts Cultural Council. So for me, um, I, when I was in high school, about 10 centuries ago, uh, I was in the very first Poets in the Schools program in New York City, and that was a sense of confirmation when a living poet came to your school and spoke about his or her life, and you suddenly realize this is real in the world. It's not just something in the dusty books that you were reading. And I think there was a reason that made me want to pay back some of the poets who brought that to me, and that made me want to teach in the schools. Uh, the second thing I want to be able to do is to um, uh, uh, C uh, collaborate with other artists too. Uh, one of the joys for me has been not just working alone, most poets work in, in solitary situations, but for me working with other artists is really exciting. I've worked with dance companies and musicians and visual artists of all sorts. So Arlington, as I said, has such a, a rich artistic resource, so one of my goals is to see if I can uh, make new, new bridges between some of the art forms too. And then the third thing I want to do is to have poetry appear in surprising places so that if you did feel a nervousness about poetry, if it, if it came to you in a place you didn't expect and suddenly you found a poem that was pleasing to you, you might realize, oh, this is something I, I can have in my life. Poetry is an art form where uh, the stuff of poetry is what we all have. We all use language. We all use memory and images. So the idea of finding that in a very strong, empowered way and realizing it has to do with your life as well, that's wonderful, both for the maker of poems or the audience for poems too. So they said that I should bring a poem or two to read to you. If it's okay, I brought three little ones. Mm -hmm. um, three poems that sort of give you a little uh, arc for what I think poets try to do. So the first one is uh, an elegy, the second one is a love poem, and the third one is about passing things on. Um, my sister Elaine passed away about five, six, seven years ago of a brain tumor. And when I first heard about this, I began writing about this. This was my way of sort of keeping company with what was happening inside her life. So I've, I'm working on three full books recently, and one is about Elaine. It's called Black Quilt, because she was a quilter. And in a sense, the poems accompany her, and then after her passing, make me stop to realize where I am in the world, how the world is different because of that. So here's a poem using some of the quilter's language, and it's called The Material. Uh, the last is about. <laughs> the Material. The June air threadbare with rain. Cloud cover the unquilted cotton batting. My eyes stitch this red brick beach green sea pearl sky design because your eyes, 
your blighted hands can no longer work the material, this mortal longing, this piecemeal delight. And the poem, in a sense, is doing what she's doing, taking random bits, stitching them together, and granting you a new scene, a new vision. This poem's called A Soul. It's, for, it's written in honor of another poet named Jane Hirschfield because she had a series of little poems called Little Souls, although the poem was written really about my wife. It's one long stream of language. A soul. They call it a soul. It's not a soul. It's the feeling in the hand. Just so much cardamom, so much time. How the tongue knows to strike one syllable, bend another. Song, an instrument, one and the same. How the current surges when she, almost casually, makes music of my name. Makes urgency of the ordinary. Her lips touching here, or mine caressing there. The tide turning rocks below us in the cove. Turning the craggy heart, smooth as a stone, the soul lifts in its hands, had a soul a hand, and tosses far out into the raveling, unraveling blue. They call it a sea. It's not a sea, it's a soul. And the last one is my grandson. My grandson, who's now three, has become my, my best teacher. <laughs> From, you know, zero on, he's teaching me how to become a human being, how to first discover language again, how to know how to find your place in the world. So he's my greatest teacher. And this poem is a little portrait of him in one little day, and it's called Supermoon. And you'll remember supermoons are the things the, uh, the newsmen love to talk about, you know, the time when the moon is largest on the horizon, closer to the earth. Supermoon. <clears throat> Not the fat mandala the meteorologists were touting on the news, but a dime-sized jewel floating beneath us in the pond's black skies, which my grandson, nearly two, snatches up in his small fist, opening it slowly, convinced of what he possesses and by what he's possessed, he offers me his wet palm. I kiss the moon there. And the lines that grab me is convinced of what he possesses. And that's not just true for the two-year-old. That's true for all of us, that we sort of function in our daily life convinced of what we possess. Maybe a little less so, but we like to believe we're, we're convinced of what possesses us, of, by what we are possessed. But really, this mystery, really, we barely know from moment to moment. So for, the, for me, the poem is a chance to suddenly be agog at that mystery and maybe be surprised enough to find the moon right there in the palm of a two-year-old. So thank you very much for listening. Madam thank Chair. you. Thank you, so, thank you for sharing those poems, those missives. And uh, I have a six and a three-year-old grandson. I know what you're talking about, how they teach you, because it, maybe it's cyclical. We're teachable again, so uh, Mr. Kira. Thank Sorry. you, Madam Chair. Um, it's my honor to move to um, appoint uh, Stephen Ratner as the third Poet Laureate of the Town of Arlington. Is there a second? Second. By Mr. Hurt, Mr. Kira. Um, I would just like to say thank you very much um, for, um, for sharing with us this evening. I, I can see with your energy and your creativity and um, uh, and your ambitions that, that you'll bring a lot to this position. Uh, Ms. Levine and, and uh, Ms. Desjardins be, before you uh, certainly brought a lot through their initiatives with the libraries and, and uh, with, with the arts community and such, and we're really looking forward to, to your individual uh, imprint on this. Um, I, I think also we, it's, uh, it's important that we also recognize the Poet Laureate Committee that's done so much work on this. I know that uh, Lizza, is, uh, Ms. Halley is here, and Mr. Burt also, and um, I, I know there are three others, Ms. Howard and uh, Ms. Band, and um, well, Pamela, of course, <laughs> and Ms. Powell, Pamela Powell, um, all worked uh, hard to uh, um, do this, this search for us. Um, again, and to keep the, the Poet Laureate uh, program alive and, and well. So thank you for, for that uh, as well. Uh, I know they'll be supporting Mr. Ratner and his uh, endeavors as he goes forward. Uh, so I'm going to affirmative vote from the, <laughs> the board here. <laughs> so. <clears throat> On a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Any further comments or questions? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Again, our sincere thanks to everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, Do me a favor and just swing that door open since the flag is there. That yeah, they keep walking through the flag. Well, I shouldn't say. There I was trying to spare Marie from getting up. <laughs> Thank you, Marie. Uh, agenda item eight, uh, an appointment to the Public Memorials Committee, William Yorker McCarthy. <laughs> Hello. Good to see you. If you, you can just say your name, even though we oh, all know it, and a yes. little bit about... Uh, William F. McCarthy, uh, I'm being appointed to the uh, Public Memorials Committee. Uh, it's an honor for me to serve in that position. Uh, I deal with the memorials. I set up a lot of them while I was Director of Veterans Services. and uh, Here in Arlington. I said here in Arlington. Here in Arlington, yes. Where else? Yes. <laughs> but... Uh, and I'd like to be involved in maintaining them and see them kept up for the future and any ones that may be approved and to add to the, to the town. Okay. And I want to say um, Mr. McCarthy is filling the recent vacancy by Will Duke St. Martin, who served for, I think, 25, 24 or 25 um, years. Easy. Yeah. Uh, amazing individual. He's given and continues. Not sure I'm going to make 25 years <laughs> but, but there's something to go a goal for you to go for um, and we certainly appreciate his service and look forward to uh, something in the future for Duke for Mr. St. Martin is there a motion to approve move approval second Moved by Mr. Hurd seconded by Mr. Dunn Mr. Dunn yeah um, thank you very much for serving yet again in yet another capacity for the town Thanks. and I just want to make a comment about this committee that I uh, I this is one of the ones that um, it really makes my life easier, and, it, and, it, and I mean this in a really positive way, because it, when it comes time to name something or something, it, it, being able to hand it to essentially an apolitical body, and so and let, and the, as the Memorial Committee does, and recommend whether or not something should or shouldn't be named after somebody is a really powerful thing, and it makes, uh, it makes the naming that we do a lot more, means it means a lot more, because it's not just a... You know, it's not a political handshake. It comes from a group of people who look at it and say whether it should or shouldn't happen. And I really appreciate that. Thank you. And thank you once again. First, thank you for your service as a veteran in the thank Vietnam you. War, as well as, um, it was Vietnam, right? I was in during Vietnam, yes. Yes. Um, as well as, as you said before, you were a veterans director for many, many years, as well as um, working on many initiatives way back when, when we first were starting the school repo projects and we yeah. both had young kids in the school. So I'm not surprised you're stepping up once again. I, I know you'll do a, a little break, but yeah. I'm back. <laughs> you do, you'll do a great job as usual. Um, any further questions and comments on a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Dunn? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Good Thank to you. see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item nine for approval, a common victual license, bre Breadboard Bakehouse 203 A and B Broadway, and Daisy Chow is listed. I'm not sure if she's here or... Hi, if you could just say your name and explain a little bit about your... Oh. Okay, um, I'm Daisy Chow. I'm the owner of Breadboard Bakery, and it's going to be an artisan bakery in a little cafe with seating uh, for about 20 people on the side, and it's located at 203 A and B Broadway in East Arlington. Excellent. First, is there a motion? M move approval. Moved by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Second. Mr. Hurd, Cur Curo, sorry. <laughs> um, any questions, comments? I hear Kevin, my former colleague from above, asking for samples. <laughs> 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 I'm channeling him. <laughs> but no, you don't have to bring samples. I, you know what, I always. I've heard that's a bad thing to do, so. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, I w wish you great luck here in Arlington. Arlington's a great community. As you're probably well, noticed, aware. Yeah. You certainly will find out um, and um, look forward to uh, continued <laughs> success. Thank you. On a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. Kiro. Any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, unanimous vote. Good to Thank see you. you. Thank you. Next agenda item 10, we have a doing business as name change all alcohol license, Shanghai Village Asian Cuisine. 434 Mass Ave, Andy Lian. I can't tell you how many calls and emails I got saying, is Shanghai opening soon? So um, I'm not sure if Andy Lian is here or a representative. You, if you can just come up, say your name and. Yeah, my name is David. I'm uh, president for the Shanghai Village uh, restaurant mm -hmm. for changing the name. 
Okay. Um, first, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Mr. Kiro, seconded by? Second. Mr. DeCourcy. Um, any announcement you want to make? Uh, you don't have to? No. Nope, don't. that's fine. You just gotta, you're getting everything in order in, in yeah. a row, so we appreciate that. Um, on a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy, any questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those aye. opposed, unanimous aye. vote. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. Is there anyone here for Citizens Open Forum? Two? Uh, okay. Um, then I'll read the preamble. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three-minute time limit to present a concern or a request. Do you want to just tell us their first name, Ms. Ms. Salsa, from 104. If you could just Street. say Thank your name you. again. and Sure. Thank you. Don Seltzer, Irving Street. Uh, resident of Arlington for 47 years. I sent a letter out to the board late last week. Um, I don't know if you all got it. It didn't appear in the official correspondence for this meeting. But it was about the meeting you had last time in which you were presented with a planning um, department report. That report included a resident survey to measure the effectiveness of the Good Neighbor Agreement bylaw. The results were probably disappointing to everybody. Not very many households responded, and of those that did, uh, only a small minority even remembered being contacted by the developer in their neighborhood. There was, however, a second survey on compliance done in parallel with this. This other study was more direct. It looked specifically at the information package that was filed with inspectional services under the bylaw. Since I've already written to you about the details, I'll just briefly summarize this evening. Almost all the developers did submit a project information letter in which they provided the builder's name and contact information. Most of them offered very little more in terms of useful information. For instance, the bylaw requires the site plan be included in the package. Only five out of the 13 um, builders complied with that. The bylaw also requires that the building inspector receive a list of all abutters within 200 feet who are to receive the packet by mail. Only four developers actually submitted a complete list. One submitted a list of about half the abutters. Another one submitted a list containing just eight out of 14 abutters who should have been notified. More than half of the developers submitted no address list at all. The final report card, only three out of the 13 projects passed by complying with the bylaw. Now, you're probably wondering, why am I bringing this before the select board? Shouldn't it go to the residential study group? Yes, it should. But the residential study group exists in name only these days. They have not had a regular meeting since last winter. If you look at the calendar, there are no meetings scheduled in the foreseeable future. To use a social media expression, they have been ghosted by town officials. At your last meeting, it was implied that the residential study group had a, a major role in uh, preparing the report that you received. They did not. They never reviewed that report. They did not contribute to its conclusions. They did not even receive a courtesy copy of the report. They have simply been ghosted, shut out of the process without any explanation. And that's why I'm speaking to you tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. I've written down the info. Thank you. Um, who's the second name, Mrs. Kropelka? Paul Paris. Paul. Oh, sorry. 106 Hemlock Street. If you can just state your name again. Mike. Paul Parisi, 106 Hemlock Street. I'm a native of Arlington, and I've lived here for the past 39 years. I also have comments tonight about the residential study group. And I'll give you a brief background, and then there's just a couple of comments. I was concerned about the residential uh, redevelopment, teardowns and McMansions and things that were being built three years ago. Three years ago, approximately late 215, early 216, <coughs> I came before the select board and expressed these concerns. I thought the houses were significantly out of proportion within regard to size and height, not all of them, but some of them. 
Some were of poor quality and design in respect to the materials in the rest of the neighborhood. They did not maintain the neighborhood character as stated in the master plan. Some had safety issues with severely downward sloping driveways and there were construction impacts on abutters from health and safety issues. Irving Street, which you may all be aware of, was an excellent example of things that kind of were out of control. Um, McMansion impacts, though, on abutters and neighbors, I was concerned at the time with loss of sunlight, impacts on existing solar arrays, fresh air, privacy, loss of privacy, reduced sight lines visibility, and loss of mature healthy trees. And particularly, exasperation of these issues on abutters that are on non-conforming lots. Uh, we're allowing certain things to be built on conforming lots, but a lot of these have non-conforming lots next door, and it makes some of these issues even more significant and more impactful, shade and things like that. Now, these things were presented at the town meeting of 2016. Warren articles were proposed. Most of them were turned down, but the town meeting authorized and formed the residential study group, which I thought at the time, and I still think, is a very good thing. I think these issues still remain in town and need to be considered. The residential study group did help adopt the driveway slope regulation, get the good neighbor packet out that Dawn just talked about, corrected the story definition to be in line with state regulations, passed design guidelines appropriations, so they'll be doing some design guidelines in the future, but not necessarily regulations, and added a notice of tree removal to the demo notice requirements. The efficacy of the good neighbor packet Dawn talked about, I've had construction in my neighborhood where I think I should receive one of these packets and it hasn't happened. And I am definitely within 200 feet of some of these projects. So as best as I can tell, the primary issues for the formation of the residential study group have still not been addressed. So I still have the same concerns that I had three years ago and I would like to see the residential study group address these and proceed forward. So I would like if the select board at some time in their background work can discuss this and find out what the residential study group plans to do about the issues that were raised three years ago and led to their formation. Uh, I don't even see them on the agenda. And otherwise it would appear to me, I'm speaking only for me, that the residential study group would have swept these issues under the rug and prefers to leave them there. That's only my opinion if nothing happens going forward. And Don alluded to it, so I didn't know he was gonna talk about it, but I don't know if there's still a functioning committee. Mm -hmm. I've attended two or three of the meetings because I wanted to see how they function, what was being discussed, mm -hmm. and yeah. if I had an opportunity, ask about my issues. Right. So I haven't been to a meeting since late winter. There's none in the calendar. I'd like to know, does this group okay, still my, exist? What I'll do is, because we can't discuss it tonight. Um, that's it. That's no, 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 I, but I, I want to say to both gentlemen, thank you for coming here and staying on this um, with my colleagues' <clears throat> approval. What I do is I'll have conversations tomorrow with the town manager and Mrs. Kropelka about what's correct avenues, whether we have conversations or the town manager, building inspector, et cetera, whether... Um, Myself, Mrs. Kropelka, Mr. Chapdelaine needs to call the town moderator, Mr. Warden, and kind of get a status update. And if things are the way they are, you know, how do we remedy that? Whether it's a select board agenda item where we think of another way to get this uh, effectively done, or if our initial queries um, are something that's successful. And hopefully I can get it to a point that it would be on a future uh, agenda item. Um, that's my goal to have somebody come in, sort of, or even a report from Mrs. Kropelka or um, the town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine, to say, and, and that would be an agenda item also. So I don't want you to think <coughs> we're ignoring it. Um, definitely will be followed up on it. I really appreciate that. But I thank you for coming down in the middle of summer. Have thank a good you. One. Thank you. Um, anyone else here for Citizens Open Forum? If not, we'll go to traffic rules and orders and other business. First, we have agenda item 11. For approval, Somerville 5K Detour Road Race. And I'm not going to say anything more because I see we have someone here to speak on it. Just your name for the Hi, record. thank you. Uh, my name is Mike Libby. I'm the Executive Director of the Somerville Homeless Coalition, also a town of Arlington, resident born and raised uh, in Arlington. 
Uh, each year we have a major fundraiser for the Somerville Homeless Coalition, which is the Somerville 5K. But if you've traveled into Somerville lately, you'll notice that um, three bridges are missing mm -hmm. uh, in the city, and one of which was right in one of our road race routes. Uh, we tried a couple different options uh, in Somerville, but nothing really. It's only about four and a half square miles, so there's not much room there. Uh, we couldn't really find a safe alternative route for our uh, road race. So I thought maybe we could come to our neighbor to the, the west. Um, we do a lot of work despite our name uh, in Arlington. We rent 27 different scattered site units providing housing for formerly homeless, disabled families and individuals. We're also working with the Health and Human Services Department and the Arlington Police Department on uh, doing some outreach to the folks over in Mugar Woods and uh, the Thorndike area. Um, so I appreciate you entertaining the um, application. Um, it's one of our biggest fundraisers. And if anybody has any questions. Move Mr. approval. Oh, moved by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Second. Mr. Kiro. Mr. Kiro, and then Mr. Dunn. Yeah, I just want to thank you very much for coming forward with this. As coincidence would have it, I, I happened to be at uh, Calvary Church on Sunday when Mr. Libby spoke at length. Um, about the partnership with Calvary and at length about the work that the Somerville Housing Coalition does. And I think that it, it really does benefit um, our town and this, this entire area. So I'm very happy and thank you for thinking of us um, when you run into the GM in, in Somerville with the, the route for your, uh, your race. I mean, we certainly have a, no pun intended, a track record of uh, being able to pull these together here. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Um, Mr. Hurd, sorry. I just want to say, so Mike and my kids go to school together, so when Mike approached me about this, the first thing that came to mind was, oh, my God, I'm going to have to run. <laughs> planning on doing this, I invite some of my colleagues to... Uh, Any stairs involved in this one? <laughs> it's flat. <laughs> so I know I'm excited, and, you know, I... Getting to know Mike and get to know the Somerville Home Homeless Coalition is really a great organization, and I'm excited that we can help. You know, I know you work a lot with the Housing Corp of Arlington to place people in Arlington, and uh, you know, it's just it's great for us as a town to be able to give back to an organization that does so much for residents in Somerville, but also in Arlington. And um, you know, I'm excited to do, to to participate. And. Um I just want to echo what my colleagues have stated and um, in terms of the um, homeless individuals, especially over at the Mugar um, site, which most people are familiar with that name, um, it really is a, sort of a mini village of not only homeless um, individuals, but individuals with many other needs that really don't think they have anywhere to turn. and, and Thankfully, through the Somerville Homeless Coalition, our Arlington Board of Health, in all my tenure on, on being the Board of Selectmen Select Board, um, the past five to ten years, I've seen, in the past, it would be, an issue would be raised and basically they would get kicked out. But now, um, individuals from your group, from Arlington's Board of Health, they go down, uh, they're trained to go down and, and speak with these individuals in a non-threatening manner, you know, whatever other issues. Uh, comor I should say comorbid, but and whatever other issues uh, exist alongside. And um, I'm really grateful for that because thankfully I've never been homeless or in any kind of position like that, but I've been in a position where I have home over my head and I uh, have a salary coming in and I face some really dire circumstances and could barely keep it together. So considering the elements that, that, that these individuals, men, women, and families are, are up against, I'm glad we don't just kick them out anymore and pass them on, make them move on to somebody else's city or town, that there is true follow through. Um, and sometimes it takes two or three contacts. But if it takes two or three, then it takes two or three. So I really do appreciate all the work Thank that you're doing it. and through yeah. the town manager, our board of yeah. health. Oh, Mr. Hurt. One more comment. If someone wants to sign up, how do they sign up for the race uh, to participate? www.shcinc.org. Thank you. On a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Carroll. Any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Unanimous vote. Good luck. Oh, Thanks so much. Thank you. Look forward to seeing you. Good weather. We pray for good weather. Yeah. Later <laughs> <laughs> uh, Exactly. Uh, agenda item 12 for approval, Boston Women's Market at Uncle Sam Plaza. And I'm not going to say anything more because I... 
Name for the record? Hi, my name is Carol Lafredo. I'm directing organizer of Boston Women's Market. We create selling opportunities for women-founded businesses throughout the New England area. So we hold marketplaces outdoor and indoor. We hold workshops, both educational and health and mind well-being focused. Um, we held our first Boston Women's Market in Arlington in July, and we were blown away by the response from the community and the support. Um, and since we had the market, we've been contacted several times about from women makers and entrepreneurs in the Arlington area wanting to participate, so we just thought we'd kind of keep the fun and momentum going and see if we could take advantage of the nice weather we have and uh, do one more market before it gets too cold outside in Arlington. Is there a motion? Move approval. By Mr. Carroll, seconded by? Second. Mr. Dunn? Dunn? Um, any questions? Oh, I'll, I'll just say, uh, my wife and I went through when you were here. Uh, oh, I'm and so we, glad to hear we, that. We've really enjoyed um, speaking with all of the, 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 the folks and and um, and just the array of, of, of uh, offerings. And, and you really did manage to fit quite a few folks into that space. We're skilled, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for visiting. Yeah. yeah. I, I couldn't make it down. Uh, I'm employed by a woman-owned business, but which I tell people it means it's woman-owned. It also employs men, too. Yeah. But I saw so many Facebook postings and yeah. individual group postings. I mean, I really felt bad and that I couldn't oh, make no, it down yeah, now there. I have another chance. It was such a <laughs> successful, truly, su I knew it was going to be a, a success, yeah. but um, you hit all points, all guns running. It, all chambers running. <laughs> um, so. I mean, we were blown away by the support of the community to help publicize, and we had newspapers, and then the local uh, TV station came down and did some interviews with our makers, and that was really great and important to us to see. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. You're doing it right, and I'm glad you're Thank taking you. another shot at it. Thank so. you. On a motion by Mr. Carroll, seconded by Mr. Dunn. Any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 We look forward to seeing you Saturday, September 7th. Thank you. You too. Okay. Um, we now go to correspondence received. A motion to receive by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Second. Mr. DeCourcy. We have one item. Um, could, I've got move receipt. Okay. Uh, on a motion by Mr. Dunn, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy. Any further questions or comments? If not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Unanimous vote. New business of Mrs. Kropelka. I don't have anything right now. Uh, Attorney Hine? <laughs> no new business. Thank you. Mr. Chapterling? Uh Thank you, Madam Chair. Just one piece, um, something uh, nice to highlight for the board. Uh, to, to credit Jim Feeney for some great work that he's been doing as well as cooperating with the DPW. So you'll see when you walk out tonight outside the entrance to the annex, a new pad being laid for a new bike rack. And similarly, there's a new pad being laid over behind the Robbins Library, in between the Robbins Library and the Whittemore Robbins House for a new pad for bike racks that were there. So th there was a need for these new pads. There were crumbling bricks near uh, the library and there was some uh, failing pavers right outside here by Town Hall. But what um, Jim is, has done and managed here is he's, he's managing um, the front of Town Hall Plaza project where we're trying to resurface and re-level. So he's experimented with a concrete <coughs> mix that he'd like to use out front where it's taken uh, granite that the, from the same quarry that the granite outside was laid, pulverized it, mixed it in with the concrete, and then it's going to have a, a reveal on it. So it'll have like that antique sort of pebble concrete feel. You know, like old sidewalks, you can actually see the stone. So we're going to see how it looks here first. It'll be a great new space for bikes, but it'll be a test for what we want to do in the front of the building. Similarly, over near Robbins Library, we laid down dyed red concrete and stamped it with uh, these rubber or plastic molds. So it's going to look like bricks. Again, similarly, we're testing that as a potential aesthetic trim for sidewalks in Arlington Center, which would be cheaper and more ADA compliant than putting bricks in that would need more maintenance in the future. So um, I really, I want to, I think it, it's good to check out. I, it's, for me as a municipal nerd, it's neat <laughs> stuff to look at, but I really want to credit Jim and the DPW and Mike Rademacher for thinking innovatively to get some good stuff done, but also use it as a test, uh, sort of a test plot for other stuff we're trying to get done in town. Can I confirm that I thought there was a random, like, just brick layers that came in and put a perfect, like, rectangle of bricks, See, it looks like bricks. on the yeah. way over from Jarvis House? Oh, no, are they at it again? Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. I can rinse again. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty convincing. Yep. So, Mr. Chaplin? That's all I have. 
Mr. DeCourse? Yeah, one piece, uh, Madam Chair, thank you. Um, so this is our last meeting of the summer, and between now and September 9th, our population in Onikton will be going down because of the number of students that will be going back to school and, and starting college. So I just wanted to wish those students uh, who are starting their college careers all the best. I, I have some information from Onikton High I'm going to share. Um, from the class of 2019, the students are attending 131 colleges in 26 states, closest being Tufts, furthest in the United States being the University of Washington, 3,200 miles away. Um, students are also going to colleges in six different countries, um, as far away as Italy and Croatia, Canada, the Netherlands, um, Ireland, and Scotland. So I wish all the students all the best, and we look forward to seeing them either Thanksgiving or over the, uh, the holidays, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure um, they're all looking forward to the next phase of their life and the, and the, the, the adventures that they're uh, going to go on. So best of luck. Thank you. Mr. Dunn? Nothing. Mr. Hurd? I just want to comment that the past two weeks we've had spectacular weather and attendance mm -hmm. at the beer gardens. Mm -hmm. I've been and, two of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I know that we've had good... I haven't seen anybody, but I, I've heard we've had good attendance of, of the board. But it's just it's been great events. It's been yeah. lines, and the music's been awesome. And every everyone that has gone, uh, I know people have gone for the first time in the past couple of weeks, and they've just said how, like, I can't believe this is here. And then <laughs> everyone that's there goes and eats at uh, yeah. local restaurants. So you know, it's been a good example of what the beer garden does for us. I think we've all in our, been on uh, like you know like coffee runs where we have like we feel like three week three mornings a week we're like we're at a coffee shop having like an informal meeting with somebody. Yeah. I now do them at the beer garden. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a meeting? <laughs> and stand up. Just wanted to mention two today. The rink opened and I went there to stick and puck with my son. I just want to commend the rec, rec department because it looks great. It's in, the ice is in good shape and. Building is very clean and about as, as nice looking as it's been. So, Mr. Carroll. No, no business. Uh, just two things. Um, with my colleague's approval, um, I'm going to work with the town manager either the end of September, or beginning of October. Have both of our chiefs in. Yep. Um, our newly appointed fire chief Kevin Kelly, as well as our acting police chief Julie Flaherty, um, spoken with the vice chair, Mr. Dunn, as well as informally with the rest of you all, um, we'll certainly come up with uh, what we, we'd like them to speak on. But feel free to have any conversations um, with Mr. Chapdelaine in case I miss anything, uh, anything of importance. And then the second is I'm working with Mr. DeCourcy and uh, the town manager again in the fall, um, probably mid-fall, um, coordinating probably a budget and revenue task force meeting along with having our legislators in. And if there's no need for the Budget and Revenue Task Force meeting, um, after conversations with Mr. DeCourcy and Mr. Chaplain, we'll just have a straight up um, agenda item where we ask the legislators to come in. Um, uh, what I'd like to do is, um, and I don't know, Mr. DeCourcy, if you wanted to, since you were the person who kind of started this, uh, state a brief intent. I'm, I'm sorry, did uh, it, it, Any intentions of, um, what like I think we've had conversations in terms of yes they give reports to us but we kind of want to flip it the other way around mm -hmm. and yeah and I, I think this started as a request for for a legislative update which I think is yeah. appropriate after after Labor Day but also to, to your point madam chair to, to I think they would be uh, look forward to hearing from us what our what our concerns are and what our comments are as well right so and um, to that end I've asked the town manager maybe to come up with three to five capital projects or something otherwise. Because um, it's been a, a, a few minutes. Um, I know when uh, previous delegations were in there and you have to go along with um, what can be done, but um, Arlington, along with other cities and towns, but we're just concerned with Arlington, um, we could usually get a supplemental bond of something in there. Um, not every year, but you know, every two to four or five years, and I think we're coming up on that time. But we can't really um, look to the legislators if we haven't said, here's what's on our radar. Can you look at it in the venue of the State House and a possible supplemental bond item or something else? Um, 
you know, we just present what's out there and they might be able to say, you know what, of these 11 things, we can really focus in on this one and be a partner on it or something else. So that's the, the way I'm going with that. Um, on no further new business, a motion to adjourn by? So moved. Mr. Kiro, so. seconded by Mr. Dunn. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed, unanimous vote. We are adjourned until September 9th, 2019. Thank you, ACMI.